Andrew Rowe. Tell me about your Lloyd Carrier. Right, my Lloyd Carrier, um, I've been restoring uh, uh, carriers for about 30 years and I picked this one up as a wreck uh, quite a few years ago and in the intervening years I've been trying to find parts uh, here and there and um, yeah this chassis was quite twisted and buckled when I first start, started and um, yeah we just built it up from there, um, replicated the body, um, found a lot of the original instruments, uh, yeah put tracks on it and got it up and running. So it's still a work in progress, there's still hood bows to go on it, canopy, uh, that sort of thing. Um, the history with the Lloyd carriers in New Zealand, uh, there was 21 imported into the uh, country uh, during the war, 1942-43, uh, and they appear to be basically all starting and charging units, which were designed to follow uh, armoured uh, regiments of uh, tanks around uh, you know, for starting and charging, because um, quite often batteries are going flat on those sort of vehicles, and and these were the the maintenance of vehicle. And um, and out of that 21, uh, there's possibly uh, around about a dozen uh, surviving in the country, um, in various uh, states of uh, disrepair, from you know running restored to to still just wrecks. So. So would that be anything to do with the fact that these were soft skinned as opposed to the, the armoured skin? Were they less attractive to, to farmers in that regard or, or why, why such a high survival rate? Oh yeah that, that's a hard one to really um, put a finger on. Uh, really these were designed off a truck chassis uh, with a uh, soft skin body, uh, fabricated sheet metal. Whereas uh, you get the universal carriers were, were quite, um, you know, from quarter inch to half inch thick material. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just an anomaly that, um, you know, there was, there's a, out of the percentage, you know, there's 50% surviving sort of thing. Yeah. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. So that's what it is. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, and um, yeah, with the Lloyd, there was. Um, there was actually uh, 11 manufacturers uh, during the war, uh, all based in England, and and the particular ones that came to New Zealand, um, if you want to get technical with the specifications, you know, they were in, under contract number uh, 2415, uh, T2415 was the official contract number, and uh, there was 560 made in that contract. And, and yeah, as, as I believe it, there was the, the 21 we got were out of that contract. And that was made by Vivian Lloyd and Company uh, in the UK. So, um, but there were several thousand made in total and there was quite a few variants um, from, uh, from the starting and charging to track towing. They towed a six pounder um, or just the personnel carriers. So yeah, so that's sort of the history of, um, of the Lloyds. So, yeah. so how long have you had this one? Oh, well, it's, it's been probably, uh, oh, it's since the mid-90s, mid, mid uh, 90s, I'd say. Um, as I said, I've been collecting for 30 years now, and it's, I first started off with the, the local Pat and Bren carrier, and it's just gone from there. Um, I mean, we're constantly uh, working on uh, several local pattern carriers as, as well as Canadian ones, um, English Universal ones and and I've got a couple more Lloyd projects um, also in the pipeline to do at some stage but um, and also we've got quite a heavy focus on um, armoured stuff as well. Um, we're working on uh, Valentine's, uh, a Covenanter tank which is, um, that's quite a rare tank in itself, there's only four left surviving in the world on that one. And, uh, and this year we hope to do a couple of Stuart tanks um, yeah, for the lineup too. So. The post-war history of this one, do you have any idea of, of what it was used for? Post no real post-war history other than um, a lot of these machines. Oh, it's Andrew, we were just talking about the, the post-war history of the, the vehicle. Yeah, well, uh, well a lot of these vehicles post-war were, were basically, when they were sold off, 
Lloyds were about 19, 1958, 59, and in 1960 they started disposing of a lot of this equipment. And a lot of um, old engineering firms back then bought them and cut them up for the road wheels. Um, you know, the track just went for scrap a lot, a lot of the times. Um, this was still sort of standard Ford components and the V8 engines, which was the side valve engine, which were quite common in the day to run um, a, a lot of vehicles. Um, as well in, in the 1970s, you know, a lot of stock car drivers started using them you know, for the stock car circuit. And um, that's basically, even one of our local club members, uh, he was working for an engineering firm just local to me, um, and he actually physically drove a, a Lloyd Carrier off a transporter and cut it up, and that was in the early 70s. Um, you know, really is quite recent as that. Um, so that's what sort of happened with the life of the Lloyd. Yeah. Oh, Andrew Rowe, thank you very much. Okay, cheers.